We mentioned Rod Blagojevich. Yes, he is the star. Once again, he's the center of attention. He's on trial out in Chicago. And take a look at some of the tapes that have emerged of his conversations after Election Day 2008. Love this stuff. I mean, what other cabinet position would be? Not uh, stupid. How about UN ambassador? Ridiculous? Yeah, I don't think that's a, a realistic or right. serious. Uh... <laughs> That'd be cool, huh? Yeah. Start putting down, get helping human services. All right, we've got to agree with Rod Boglovich on this. That would be cool. Uh, no question. There he's talking about what he could get in exchange for naming Lisa Matt, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Valerie Jarrett, uh, to, to the Senate seat. He could be a cabinet position. UN ambassador Dana Milbank, Washington Post, joining us for the Post Politics segment. This is your debut appearance on the Post Politics segment. It's good to have you here. Very excited. I'm so nervous. No, this yes. is big, I can tell. You should be. This is really uh, grilling start. But, but, but honestly, this would have been brilliant. Rod Blagojevich as the so. U.S. ambassador to I the mean, United Nations. Susan Rice, she's fine and capable, but let's face it, she's a little boring. <laughs> and the U.N. is a place where you want to have your answer to Hugo Chavez and Ahmadinejad and uh, whoever else, uh, uh, Gaddafi, whoever. Uh, people go there and do crazy things, so we need to answer <laughs> crazy with crazy. And we can be as crazy as anybody else in the world, and I think that's one of America's great exports. Well, Blago's great second act now, I think, is the is, 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 permanent reality show of, of Rod Blagojevich on trial. We add to that now, Elliot Spitzer with the CNN deal, Jack Abramoff with pizza. I'd throw in Tom DeLay on Dancing with the Stars. Who's got the best political second act going? Who, and, and, and to think that we once thought that there would not be uh, a <laughs> great second acts in, in American public life. Uh, uh, it's happening over and over again. There's almost no such thing as, uh, as permanent disgrace now. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for uh, uh, Mark Souter to uh, <laughs> come up with something new and Mark Sanford. Mark Sanford's still in office. Uh, he's still in office, and, and I'm sure he's headed Appalachian on to, to greater things. I mean, he would he would probably make a heck of a uh, talk show host. I think he, he'd be good right here on Top Line. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so to, you know, to, the, uh, to the big second act, the serious one, uh, McChrystal out, Petraeus in. Uh, did, that what I'm amazed about this is that nobody actually saw it coming. Everybody saw McChrystal leaving, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but Petraeus coming in to replace him. And it, I think you're right. It was a, a, a brilliant uh, a masterstroke there, because anybody who was going to uh, uh, criticize uh, the president was immediately silenced. You can't say by sticking Petraeus in there that they've compromised the war effort, that they've said anything back there. This man truly uh, walks on water uh, here in Washington. I mean, and he's and he. I mean, he's 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 popular with the allies as well. He is uniquely gifted. Uh, uh, I just remember the. Uh, you know, I, I I joke that his his last name. Petraeus, you know, is sort of like the returning uh, Roman general after after conquering other civilizations. I mean, that's really how he is he's viewed around here. Well, it, yeah, and it sent a potential 2012 challenger to uh, Kabul. This is like sending Huntsman <laughs> to Beijing. And I don't think McChrystal can run. I don't know. Uh, maybe you know, certainly not. In but he could get work. a talk show. I, I think that's very possible. I think given the given recent, I think maybe someone's hiring in the in the cable world. Uh, Dana, though, you you were critical of the president in in your column yesterday for not acting more quickly. He then took he takes a day, brings him to Afghanistan. This does seem like it's worked out well for him politically. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, I mean, I think there's a question. That the president is often perceived as not uh, having enough pushback. You know, he just takes abuse. Right. Uh, he certainly takes it from the Democrats, can't keep them in line. There's nothing the Republicans won't uh, criticize for. You have the Secretary of State freelancing on all kinds of subjects. And here was a time when they were again saying, the president's angry. Oh, he clenched his jaw. <laughs> well, big whoop that he clenched his jaw. You've got to do something. You can't just say you're angry. And I think when he came out yesterday and said, okay, you've defied me, you're out of here. And I think people are going to think twice before doing it again. I think it was absolutely crucial for him. And fascinating, he looked him in the eye to do it. He brought him to the Oval Office mm -hmm. to fire him, which is not the usual way. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, that may have bought him some time if he wasn't right. quite sure that he wanted to fire him, that, you know, that at least bought him 24 hours. Uh, you know, we, we've heard the TikToks now that they were leaning in that direction, but mm -hmm. uh, I think it was very fortunate politically that, uh, you know, his spine was stiffened and that, uh, that he made that call. Yeah, no, pl played it for the best, definitely. Dana Milbank for Washington Post, Post Politics, you're invited back second. Act, first act, whatever. Well, made it you, back. Ooh, you, guys, made it. You, you made it through, no problems Ooh. at all. That does it for this edition of Top Line. Watch us again tomorrow. In the meantime, it's twitter.com slash the note. We'll see it. I think I think Blago, I mean, get it.